May 26, 2020, in the year of the coronavirus. Here in Texas, this is the third trip back. Wednesday. I was having a great day, but I guess I didn't batten down the hatches enough. All of the uh, tent just blew away in a storm. So, I'm trying to get everything secure. A little too little, a little too late. Here comes the rain. It's Thursday <clears throat> after another big rainstorm last night. I'm trying to get some work done before the next bit of rain rolls in. So I'm changing out some of these totally blue ones with a clear one. So I'm having to take the tape off and retape so that when the light actually shines through it, it has more of an effect, more of a stained glass effect. So I'll have to take a couple of minutes and do that before I get started. This is an earthship building technique called porcupining. Well, in this case, I'm building a complete frame of a shed first. In order to marry the cement or mortar to the frame, you got to have little pieces of metal uh, joining the, the wood and the masonry. So I'm just using whatever you know can of rusty nails just happens to be around. Luckily, at the ranch here in Texas, there's lots of little cans of rusty nails. This is the front of the shed, and I've decided that I'm going to put these, these ship portal mirror or windows, ship portal windows, embed them into the concrete and the design of the front. So uh, hopefully if I just put some cement in here and kind of sink it in and let it harden up and do it all the way around, it sh shouldn't go anywhere. Crossing my fingers. So I mixed up a batch of cement, oh, maybe an hour ago. And I've been working on some other bottles, knowing that as the cement starts to set up, you can use it more like, like a mud pie. So hopefully that'll be thick enough. Suspended place. 
just want to get to the mud. You know, you just got to carefully get some other mud. eyeballing all this. One of the reasons why I'm doing this shed first as opposed to a full-blown earth ship is that, uh, you know, I want to try out some techniques, just get some practice after going to the Earthship Academy last year, it's, uh, there's a lot to remember. And for me, I remember by doing So, pretty good day. We got some more headway on this little ship portal window. Mounting in there, you have to kind of do a, a little bit at a time and reinforce the concrete because it's, um, it's a little bit, you know, it's heavy and I want to be safe and make sure that it's going to stay in there. Back here on the pasture, my mom, Mimi, has agricultural tax exemption land. So neighboring farms, their cows run through here in the distance. So they like to come over here and eat, you know, whatever they can find, basically. Blue bonnets, cotton, wood plants, all sorts of stuff, grass. So fence is there to protect it. Hey, so part of this Earthship construction adventure is that I recycle a lot of things from the dumpsters at the the television uh, movie soundstage that I work out in Brooklyn. And one of the shows that was uh, in the soundstage was the West Side Story. I figured I could use this for something, so I'm going to try to work these panels in, some of these panels in, uh, into the shed. Free recycled safety glass from the set of West Side Story shot in Brooklyn, New York. Just have to document my napkin sketch here on the table and my dimensions. The napkin sketch equates to this little wall here using some recycled safety glass. Putting in some safety glass there. I changed this frame. Uh, it was originally like the others into a door frame. So it'll be a little back door to the shed. Getting these ship portal windows built up. Uh, it's 90 degrees out here on the pasture. 
basically making mud pies. That's what I'm doing. These are the, the tools of the trade. I had a batch of mortar that was about ready to, to harden up. So I added some water and managed to save it. But about these softball size mud pies are good to work with. Now I'm kind of kind of eyeballing the height of the mortar line. I guess it's like, you know, like laying brick, except it's laying bottle bricks. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it one side to the other. So I'm trying to make a symmetrical side. So this side is wants to kind of look like or almost look like the other side. I got a little cloud cover now, so a little relief from the sun. Because this side is going to get kind of covered by framing, I have a kind of a jury rigged bottle brick. So like half of that's like, you know, a mustard jar and the other half is just a bottle. But you're going to just see this side on the front. Maybe you'll get a little light coming through the back. Now this mud's really going to want to harden up on me fast, so <clears throat> I got to work quickly. like I need a little bit of a tape repair. Okay, now as I may have mentioned before, it doesn't really matter. You're just joining these two halves with tape. It kind of just gets hidden inside the wall. You don't ever see it. And then if you look inside, you probably, I don't know if you even see the tape inside, maybe. But, so tape repair done. I have a stick here, which I use to put across the face to make sure that all the bottles are the same. In this case, the bottle sticks out more inside the shed than it does on the outside, so it has a tendency to kind of want to fall down, so I have to go around the other side and kind of pack it in and shore it up. lunch. So today I have a little help from me familia. I've got my sister uh, Julie and my nieces and nephews Sierra and Bella Daniel and Sammy they're all here helping me so here's the tent that uh, got tangled up in the thunderstorm After a really great day of family helping me, um, Sierra and Bella removed the form around the bottom of the foundation slab. So in order to fill that in, I'm just uh, I'm putting in some little small pebbles, some aggregate, kind of like a maybe a pseudo French drain just so that uh, there's no moisture that collects under there. I think it'll work. Okay, very special guest with me today. My lovely wife, Tammy is joining me in building. So what did we do today so far? We um, 
we put some cans in, or bottles in the bottom panel there. Yep. Um, prep the whole area with more plastic so that we wouldn't um, screw anything up that was already finished. There. Possibly get to another square. Too. What's that? Because you have the metal cans here and the circles here, it might be cool to do a circular hmm. thing right here in the silver can. That is a good idea. All right, so the next step we've conceived. I'm cleaning these glass bottles so they get shiny, but now we're going to create this circle to reflect the ship's window. What we're going to do is dark bottles, kind of creating the frame, curving those, and then we're going to put silver cans around the circle to create a strong circle, and then clear bottles in the center. Should be really cool. All right, so uh, as you can see, it's starting to come together. Our idea come to life. Thank you. This is our template for our clear bottles that are going to go in the middle. Just checking to see if this is centered and a and a quarter. Ah sense of uh, spatial evenness is good. I could I could tell it was a little off. Okay. okay. So this is prepped for mud. Three parts sand, one part Portland cement, one part water. Morning. Morning. So yeah, we're getting a little delayed start, but that's okay. You know, we're out late, twelve thirty. Yeah, we're out uh, at the neighbors, at Jan and Mary Jo. Uh, but we are doing a couple of things today. I'm planning out the roof rafters for the shed, and Tammy's finishing up some. I'm planting my last crepe myrtle. Where's the Where's the crepe myrtle? Well, no, this one doesn't look like much. This is just roots that Mimi started for me. The others have leaves on the top, so they're looking really good. So eventually the crepe myrtles are gonna go near uh, the earth ship that eventually will be built out there. Um, you know, chipping away, little by little. Spending a little time today figuring out this uh, roof rafter situation. So I'm about 12 feet up in the air doing that. And uh, I'll have to just uh, cut and repeat, cut and repeat. Although, fun fact, the 
back corner here where the front corner is very not square. So it's a little bit of a sculpture, so things have to change based on that corner. <laughs> Howdy, partner. <laughs> All right, so good morning. Here's the work site, and we got cows on the work site, so we got to shoo them away. <laughs> All right, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go, 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 go. Get him out of here, dogs. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Get out of here. You get out of here. Get your beautiful cows. Hey, get out of here. Chase them away. There you go. Thank you. All right, so we got the cows shooed away, and and one of them was one of the little calves was munching on my this rain jacket. Can you see it? It's like if that calf had eaten that, that would have been absolutely have death. To throw that under a pressure washer today. <laughs> hey Tam, what you doing? I'm porcupining. <laughs> what does that mean? Okay, end of a pretty momentous day here. We finally got some roof rafters on the shed. So now we can get some uh, roofing up and get this dried in. It'd be really great to get the roof on this thing. I got a hex head self-tapping screw, which I thought, oh yeah, I got a hex head screw something or other in my, you know, tool somewhere. And I'm just taking it as a sign to pack it up for today. Roof will go on tomorrow. All right. <laughs> day finally get into the roof got the hex bit I need to get these screws in self tapping screws love it So after uh, a couple of days of a decent sized learning curve here, I finally am zeroing in on getting this roof on the shed. Hi, I'm Tammy and I grew up in Iowa. Um, met Derek in 91 doing theater. Um, I had moved to New York and we met in Missouri and got married. We've been married for almost 20 years, 25, almost 25 years actually. Jesus, time moves fast. And I sent Derek this image, this video of what was called an earth ship. And it caught his imagination and mine immediately. And we we're trying out our earth ship skills on Mimi's Ranch here in New Ulm, Texas. I'm Barry Mahon. I've been here 53 years. I've been working on tires 37 <laughs> years. Industry tire store. Awesome. Thanks. So Jan recommended this tire store. The owner, Barry Mahan of Industry Tire Service, I think is the name of his place. 
any rate, he, uh, he usually has to get rid of these tires uh, and take them to the landfill, and he was gracious enough to let us take them away. So it's a win-win for both of us. I get tires for the Earth ship, and he doesn't have to spend pay, a day. Pay five dollars. Pay five dollars a tire for for someone to haul them away. So uh, they're gonna go. They're gonna get reused, and um, hopefully, you know, make this place a little, a little more ecologically friendly. All right. So my name is Jan Knabe, originally from Germany came in the United States in 64 and lived out in uh, New Orleans since 1982 when we bought the property and in 1990 I started building my own house. And I wish you a lot of success for your <laughs> Earth ship. Thank you, Jan. And uh, it's a great project and I can't wait uh, to see it to be started. So on our first run to Barry's uh, tire shop, we got about 45 tires in the back of Jan's trailer. And I was following behind him. And uh, so far he's only lost a couple. And uh, luckily since I was behind him, I was able to pick them up. So only two down. But we're not to the gate yet, so there still might be more down. So eventually when we build this earth ship uh, out on the pasture, you know, it will be about sourcing things, materials uh, locally. So uh, this, is the, this is the prime example, uh, taking care of some tires on a local level. So here we are, Jan's backing up his trailer. It's my birthday and I'm out working on the shed. Pretty much the last working day of this trip um, for the shed. And I would say that it's maybe 75% done. So we had, a, we had a good run of getting this, finish this go around. A little horizontal piece is bowed. So we have to shim it on the dried mortar, build it up, wait for it to dry. Then we'll pull our shims out and uh, fill in the rest and have a straight board and a mortared square. So today is the last day of this visit working on the shed out here on Mimi's Ranch in New Ulm, Texas. And um, just going to be doing some wrapping up and I guess all intents and purposes kind of drying in of the shed. I did get a roof on this trip and um, I'll be able to store my tools and such here. So that was the point. A good ending. Good ending. All right. Ciao. Got the place wrapped up and Hopefully it'll all be in one piece the next time we're out here because I don't know when exactly, but the shed is a wrap and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. He got the roof on. Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! This is fun. <laughs> Through the valley of purple flower. So what? This is dangerous. This is excitement. <laughs> oh, it's turned into the Valley of Yellow Flower. And we are soon entering <laughs> the Hole of Doom. Cow country. This city girl right here, oh, she's, she's mighty afraid of those moo cows. Uh, oh, okay, if that cow stabs me in the ass while we drive by, that's not funny. <laughs> Come on, hurry up. Oh, he's staring at me. <laughs> Who's afraid of the cows now? <laughs> I don't want a cow horn up my butt. That Neither would hurt. do I. <laughs> and ever since we've been trying to live more consciously and live. Uh, a thoughtful, mindful life. 
and we're beginning our journey of creating what we were inspired by, which is an earth-inspired shed, and this is what we've got so far, but isn't it beautiful?